I'm Kyle Babiak. I'm an exercise specialist at Sport and Wellness, and today we're going to take you through an occupational test, the PAIR, which is the Physical Abilities Readiness Evaluation. Through this test, we're going to take you through six laps, working on cardiovascular conditioning. After that, there's going to be simulated uh, ditch jumps with the hurdles and hopping over fences with the vault. After you've completed that portion, we move over to the push-pull, which is to simulate a battle with somebody. So it's going to make sure that you're in control and able to control your body throughout. After that, we want to make sure that you can save your partner and we do a torso bag carry. So right now we have Devin demonstrating some of the common faults that we see during the obstacle course of the pair. So Devin's going to start out here. He's going to start to his first pylon. He wants to go outside the pylon. However, he's going to go inside, we're going to make sure he goes around the outside, and then continues on the court. When he gets to the mat itself, we want to make sure that he takes off prior to the mat. We don't want to see that he is making contact. Imagine that this mat extends as if it were a ditch. So we want to make sure that you're able to jump that mat and clear it comfortably. So let's see how it looks. So Devin cleared it well, excellent, continues on. A couple common faults, he jumps comes outside the mat here, his heel touches, and therefore that'd be a five second penalty. If you continue to run, it just gets marked and added to the end of your test. You can only get one five second penalty per fault per lap. On this one, he's touched, the, he's cleared the mat comfortably, but come outside the mat, it's still okay. From here, he's going to go over to the stairs. When it comes to the stairs, he pulls a little too hard and trips coming up the stairs. And now we just want to make sure that he's doing this in control, so he's going to come back down. Are you okay to continue? Yep. Yes. Okay, so he's going to continue in control up the stairs. Sometimes it happens. We want to make sure you're making contact with the top step and then continuing on. On the way back, Devin comfortably comes up, goes outside this pylon, and continues on. When he's clearing over the sticks here, we want to make sure that he isn't comfortably clearing the sticks. So we want to make sure that both feet are coming over with a flight phase, just like he demonstrated. If Devin goes over top of it and swings the leg outside, exactly, that would be a two second fault. You can get two seconds for each one of the hurdles. So if Devin knocks it off like so, you continue to run and we'll continue on to your next lap. The instructor will place the stick back where it belongs. If on the odd chance you have hit the first stick into the second stick, that will be a four second penalty on that lap. You will continue to run coming over to the vault. With the vault, it's pretty lenient. We just wanna see you coming over, landing in control so we can't see you flopping over top. Starting off on the chest. We wanna make sure that the chest and hips make contact with the ground. If at any point the chest does not make contact with the ground, like so, then we'll tell him to make sure the chest comes down and then pushing up. You can come up by rolling onto your side if you want or roll onto your back, that's perfectly fine in the pair. You cannot grab the vault on your way up to help you up. We'll tell you to get back down before continuing. Uh, we also cannot see that you're doing a hover push up that I see a lot of you guys do. From here, we're gonna present as if we're going onto our back. So we're coming over the vault, landing on our back. We want to see the shoulders and hips make contact with the ground. Your feet can come up if you want to use them for momentum to swing yourself back up. That's perfectly fine. You can roll over. We just don't want you to be grabbing onto that vault. Once you've stood up, you're going to move around that pylon and continue through laps one through five. On lap six, you would come inside and move to your push pull. All right, so we have Megan. She's now completed her obstacle course. She's just going to demonstrate some of the common faults with the push-pull. She's going to demonstrate with the push to begin with here. So, you need to make sure that your chest and hands are, only your hands are making contact with it. If you see contact with the chest, we need to make sure we create separation from our hands to our chest. Excellent. From here, when she pushes in, you can see how she's a straight body. We want to see it bend the elbows, the hips, and the knees. It is okay to be leaning further out and having more overhead position, but we still need to see a break in those elbows. From here, we also don't want to see her wedging her elbow into her side. So this is a common one I see when people get tired. Is she's not created space between her elbow and her body, so she's just using it as a leverage rather than using the muscles as if she were in a, in a fight with somebody. So from here, 
Megan's now going to demonstrate the pole position. So we need to see it bend the elbows, the hips, and the knees. As you can see, she's surfing right now, so let's see that bend. Right now, she's gone way too extreme. She's now below, and we need to see that nice, comfortable, controlled position. From here, we want to make sure that she's in control coming around. We don't want to see her flying so far that she walks into the wall and pushes off the wall with her foot or other issues. Other common things that we tend to see with this is that people don't go far enough, so they'll keep the machine outwards too far and that'll become a problem. While doing both the push and the pull, we need to make sure that we are seeing green most of the time, no less than yellow, and if we see red, then that means the weight is down and that arc will not count. All right, so Megan's now finishing up her push position. She's going to start into her fall. She's gonna end up on her chest, we need to see contact with the chest, the hips. She must get up off her chest. She cannot roll over. Use the wall or the machine to help her. So if you do touch the machine, you come back down, repeat the get up properly. From here, she'll now go onto her back. Same idea. You can kick up, that's perfectly fine. She needs to make sure that her hands make contact with the top of the machine to ensure that she's standing all the way up. For those of you that are taller, you might be able to reach from a kneeling position that is not allowed. Bring yourself back up, touching the top, touch the top, touch the top, touch the top, touch the top. Excellent. Now you're down into your back, sitting up nice and strong. Unable to use the wall, she must get back down and repeat appropriately, standing up before she completes or moves into her pull. All right, so Megan has completed her push pull. She's had two minutes to get over to here. We're dem going to demonstrate some of the common issues we see with the torso bag carry. So the torso bag in most cases is going to be 80 pounds, might be 100 for some people. Uh, for this one, we want to see you picking it up in control. We cannot see a flight phase, so we cannot throw it up into the air like we're doing a clean or any sort of power lift, like so. She would need to put it down and restart. If she drops it like so, then she will also need to, that will count as one of her attempts. With the pair test, you do get three attempts. So when Megan goes to pick it up, she can either pick it up from the edges or she can pick it up using the outside fabric. She cannot use the handles or the sandbags on the inside. Once the weight is up, she can scoop underneath if she prefer, but that's a preference. Excellent, she's walking. She cannot run at any point, so you must stop. You'll get one warning. If you continue to do it, then you'll have to put the weight down. If she drops the weight mid-test, uh, she'll drag it to the nearest pylon and immediately pick it up. You do not get the opportunity to shake out your hands. You must pick it up immediately and repeat the test, pretending like this is now your start pile up. So Megan's gonna comfortably complete it now, all the way around the outside, making sure she does not hit the pile on. If she does, that'll be her second attempt. You'll put the weight back down. Megan, put the weight back down. <laughs> because she hit the pile on, this will now be her third attempt. She'll pick it up and she's gonna do it perfectly back to the start point. Up in control, good. Around that far pylon, do not touch it. Back past your starting pylon, making sure to keep your wrists above your waist, excellent, and down in control. If you have three faults or cannot complete this, it'll be a failed torso bag carry, which will also be a failed test. 